Hi, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Andy Merkley. I'm the Army, Audio, or Army Hearing Program Manager uh, for the Army Hearing Program located at the Army Public Health Center at Aberdeen Proving Grounds, Edgewood area in Maryland. Our shop, the Hearing Program shop, is responsible for monitoring all areas of the Army Hearing Program, including hearing readiness, clinical hearing, operational hearing, and the general hearing conservation program for the Army. Uh, we also support uh, the Reserve and the National Guard. Our staff consists of acoustic engineers and audiologists and then some technical staff uh, that support all uh, the Army Hearing Program with equipment and uh, uh, technical expertise. Our acoustic engineers evaluate uh, blast exposure. They evaluate noise hazards for equipment and weapon systems across the Army and across the DOD. Our audiologists monitor the surveillance audiometry and provide professional expertise to the field uh, related to audiometry, surveillance audiometry, and the clinical audiometry aspects of the hearing program. Today I'm going to talk, uh, I'd like to introduce you to uh, three initiatives that the Army Hearing Program is currently undertaking. The first is related to uh, boothless hearing testing. Uh, so most of you have had your hearing tested with the Defense Occupational and Environmental Health Readiness System for Hearing Conservation, where you go into a clinic, sit down in an audiometric booth, and a technician comes and administers a hearing test. This capability allows us to take that testing outside of a sound treated room, uh, which supports uh, two primary areas right now, the COVID-19 re uh, recovery uh, related to the reduction in hearing testing that occurred once uh, COVID struck and we all had to um, st not stop hearing testing, but reduce hearing testing uh, to make it safe. Uh, this effort will allow us to bring hearing testing to the individual rather than the individual having to go into a clinical environment and getting tested inside a booth. It can be easily administered by a certified technician in the field and we are uh, currently getting ready to train technicians on how to use this equipment. In addition to uh, the benefits that we get with the COVID environment, it, uh, it's also technology that allows audiologists to take hearing testing far forward on the battlefield and conduct assessments of individuals that have been wounded or injured on the battlefield and uh, take a look at their hearing and decide, is this an individual that uh, can remain on the battlefield or do they need to be evacuated to the rear? without needing to have a large audiometric sound booth accompanying the audiologist. The other technology that we're looking at is hearing protection fit testing. Uh, this is a technology that allows us to take a user of a hearing protector and evaluate exactly how much protection that user is getting from the hearing protection that they fit themselves versus having to you know, read a label on a package of hearing protection that has a noise reduction rating and guessing as to whether or not that individual is getting as much protection as they need. This is a, a recommended best practice both by uh, the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health and the National Hearing Conservation Association. And we're, we're looking forward to getting this technology out into the field to better protect our service members and our noise exposed civilians. The other effort that we are, we are involved with is transitioning hearing technician training. So all technicians that conduct hearing testing in the, in the workplace need to be certified uh, to, to conduct that testing. And that certification needs to meet the requirements outlined by the Council for Accreditation in Occupational Hearing Conservation. And that training historically has been all classroom training. So three and a half to four days of classroom training, didactic and hands-on practicum. 
This effort, uh, the, the Army Hearing Program is doing in conjunction with the De Department of Defense Hearing Center of Excellence, is a joint incentive funded program to transition training into a virtual environment. Uh, this was approved about two years ago and was in the works just as COVID struck. And as uh, COVID-19 struck, we were able to transition our training into this virtual platform almost immediately because we were already moving in that direction. So over the last six months, the Army Hearing Program has trained over 180 technicians using a two-phased approach to hearing uh, conservation training. The phase one is done through virtual uh, means, either Adobe Acrobat or Microsoft Teams. Uh, students join the classroom from all over the world. Uh, we've, in our last class, we had students joining from Inserlik, uh, Turkey, uh, as far east as Inserlik, Turkey, to as far south as Honduras, and then across the continental United States, all joining together in one class uh, and freeing up uh, audiologists across the Army to uh, spend time doing hearing conservation related activities and not having to spend those uh, two, the equivalent of two days conducting training where our staff does that training. Then we release the students to phase two where they go on site with their practicum instructor and get their hands on the equipment, learn how to conduct uh, audiometry and practice conducting audiometry. At the end of that training, they take a standardized written examination, and if they successfully pass those, the written examination and the uh, uh, practicum evaluations, then they become certified and are able to go out and conduct hearing testing across the Army. So I'd like to, to demonstrate the capabilities of this equipment. I'll first start off with boothless uh, audiometry testing, and then we'll move into uh, personal hearing protection fit testing. Okay, so the first uh, equipment that I'd like to introduce you to is the wireless automated hearing test system. I say wireless because it there are no wires connected to this system. It connects or communicates with a tablet. So the audiometer is actually embedded in the ear cup. And the ear cups actually provide a, quite a bit of sound attenuation. That's why we call it a boothless audiometer because it provides sufficient attenuation to conduct a valid hearing test in an environment that's not in a sound treated room. Now, it doesn't mean that the environment can be super loud has to be done in a, in a relatively quiet room, but almost any quiet room uh, has low enough sound levels that we can get an accurate hearing test. During the test, the, the patient just watches the screen and selects that they heard the tone or they did not hear the tone. Okay, and we'll show that to you in just a minute. I'm gonna clean, we're gonna, going to clean the audiometer, or audiometer and then put it on our patient make sure that they understand how to take the test. So like I said earlier, technicians that operate this equipment must be certified uh, to, to uh, conduct a hearing test. So they, they do need to be trained on how to use this equipment. We'll put the, well before we put the hearing uh, audiometer on the patient's head. We'll give some instructions. So ma'am, when you uh, take the exam, you're going to tap this red button. You can see it's a fairly large red button. Whenever you hear the tone, no matter how faint or distant the tone sounds. The next technology that we want to introduce is hearing protection check. This is a system that evaluates 
how well a person's hearing protector is providing protection when they are using it, when they, when they have inserted it themselves and, and are using their earplug. This is important because it allows us to ensure that a, a, an individual that's being exposed to hazardous noise is getting as much protection as they need. So to do this, we present tones to the individual and they respond without hearing protection in their ears. Okay, and we look at the lowest level that they can hear the tone that's generated by the earphone without hearing protection. Then we ask them to put their hearing protection in just like they would usually put them in. We put the headphones back on and measure their ability to hear with the hearing protector in. We look at that difference, the difference between the unprotected and the protected results to get what's called a personal attenuation rating or a PAR. And this tells us how much hearing protection the individual is getting with those hearing protectors in place. Part of this test is to conduct a hearing check without hearing protection in place. So we'll fit the ear cups. All right, we're going to fit the ear cups over the ear. Make sure they're nice and snug. We're going to start the test by having the individual respond uh, or scroll down on the mouse when they hear the tone. So they'll scroll down until they can't hear the tone and then just gradually increase the volume until they do hear it. And they keep doing that until the system identifies the lowest level that they can hear. We're only going to test four or three frequencies, uh, 500 hertz, 1000 hertz, and 2000 hertz. Now that we're done with the, the unoccluded check, we'll have uh, our patient remove the headphones and uh, go ahead and put the earplugs in her ears just like she would uh, usually wear them. Now this is a good time to educate the employee on hearing protection devices, how to fit uh, the ear hearing protector uh, correctly. Um, it's also an opportunity for us to, to look at how much attenuation they're going to get and uh, perhaps uh, they may need double hearing protection so at the end of this test we'll be able to instruct the patient on exactly how much protection they're getting if they're overprotected, we can look at different hearing protectors that may uh, lower their protection if you overprotect somebody that can lead to communication problems non-compliance with use because of those communication problems in the workplace. So we don't want to overprotect an individual, but we also don't want to underprotect an individual uh, because then that leads to uh, hearing damage and that hearing damage can be permanent. And we want to avoid any workplace injuries. So we'll go ahead and put the hearing, the ear cups back on. Okay, so we'll put the headphones on with the ear plugs in place. and then our patient will start the occluded test. Now we're going to start the occluded test. Now that the test is over, we can remove the headphones and the earplugs and instruct the patient on their test results. So in this case, your hearing protectors are providing adequate hearing protection. Your personal attenuation rating is 20 decibel, which is right around where the noise reduction rating for that earplug is. Uh, so given your general noise exposure, you're getting adequate protection. Do um, you have any questions? <laughs> All right. Um, so the nice thing about getting the personal attenuation rating is that now we as the hearing conservation professionals, we know that this individual is getting enough protection uh, for the hazards that they are exposed to. So we can safely say that when they use their hearing protector in the manner in which they put it in by themselves, they're getting adequate protection. So I want to thank you uh, for 
listening in today, we've, we've gone over two technologies that are uh, being made available throughout the DOD, uh, boothless audiometry and hearing protection check uh, capabilities. We believe that these uh, technologies will really benefit the Army Hearing Program and safeguard the soldiers that are out fighting our wars and the noise exposed civilians that are, are supporting our service members. We also discussed the hearing protection certification training and the joint incentive funded uh, program that's uh, in collaboration with the DOD Hearing Center of Excellence and the Department of Veterans Affairs that improves and modernizes hearing technician training, makes it more widely available to a larger audience, and reduces the burden on local audiologists to provide that training individually. Also in the Department of the Veterans, in the Department of Veterans Affairs, this training will allow technicians who are certified to see patients that are already established in the VA system for routine audiometry without any diagnostics, but it opens up the time for the audiologist to do what the audiologist needs to do and opens up access to care for our veterans and those that have served in the past. I wanna thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the Army Hearing Program at the Army Public Health Center. Lieutenant Colonel Merkley, Army Medicine is Army Strong.